Hi everyone, welcome back with another video and today we are going to be going over how to create those looped buttonholes or attached little pieces, pattern pieces that are attached to loop in order to then fasten buttons. And since we can't use normal buttonholes for this, we'll be making everything starting at the beginning. And if you take a look at my screen, we already have a dress which is sewn together, ready for the buttons to be added. Now with most buttonholes, they have a little modesty panel that's going to be at the back. This is so that when those buttons pull across, there's still that little panel there, the fabric, so the person's skin does not show through. We have just the two bodice pieces on either side. Similar to when we fasten buttons in close, sometimes it can be a little bit easier to actually sew that seam shut at the beginning so that you can then have everything be as stable as possible. So I'm just going to quickly use my free sewing to go ahead and sew these two sides together on the bodice right here. Once I have that done, I am going to make sure to change my sewing angle from custom to turn just to make sure everything is as stable as possible and this panel doesn't end up pushing forward or through and letting that simulate shut. Perfect. All right, so now that we have that set up, so it's going to be quite stable, we can go ahead and start to add in our pattern pieces. So I pre-made a little loop pattern piece, which I'm going to simply add in. In order to make this, all I did was really use our polygon tool to create a loop shape. You can of course create actual pattern pieces that fold over, they just take a little bit more time to do. Uh, right when I bring that in, I can see that my pattern piece came in at that default particle distance of 20. Since this is such a small pattern piece, if I zoom in right here as well, might be a good idea again to go ahead and change that right away. So I'm going to go into my pattern pieces property editor on the right hand side and under that particle distance, I'm going to change it from the default 20 to 2. Now when you change anything below five, you are going to get this little pop-up, just letting you know that you made something very small and it can slow down the simulation process. But of course, with a pattern piece this small, it should not do that with your computer. And now I can actually see that pattern piece creating that nice loop shape. But I'm also going to reassign it to a cotton sateen that I'm using for my fabric. So right there, it's ready to go and it's going to actually match my material. I do need a couple more of these loops. So now I'm going to go ahead and just start to copy them. It's simple control C, control V, since I am on a PC. Now I can left click to just place one. Or if I right click, I can start to actually say how many I want and how far apart do I want them to be. I know ahead of time, I want my loops to be one and a quarter inches apart. So my interval, I'm going to set to one and a quarter. And as well as the number of shapes, I'm gonna add in four additional ones for a total of five loops. Great. And if I zoom out, I can see all of those loops right there. Before I forget to do this, again with such small pattern pieces, I'm going to add in that temporary strengthening by selecting all five of those loops, right clicking, and then coming down to strengthen. Again, this is just going to add in a little bit of extra stability. You'll notice that right off the bat, they haven't actually changed color. I like to work with this turned off. This is very up to you. If you right click in the gray space of your 3D window, you'll notice that if you come down to show hide color, you can choose to hide the color freeze, blue, strengthen, which is going to be that orangey color or solidify, which is gray. So I like to actually hide them all right off the bat, but you can also always turn that off as well. All right, now that I have my loops all ready to go, I'm ready to sew them and I'm going to use my free sewing tool, shortcut is M. And you'll notice on my pattern piece, this left side of the bodice, I have just markings where each of these loops is going to be sewn to. And for this process, I'm going to sew from the center here up and then starting at that segment point and going up. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the lower portion, starting at the top and coming down and then coming back to that segment point top down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that for all of my remaining little loops right here. This really only takes usually a minute or so. The nice thing is since I am working with the free sewing, it does give me that little blue picking dot because I'm set up starting with that length that I already know, the edge of the loop. And coming upward, it gives me again that little blue picking dot if I zoom in right there. You can see right above my cursor that darker blue dot right there. Just make sure that my sewing ends up perfectly even. 
Alright, awesome. Now that I have all of my sewing done on all of these, I could of course go ahead and simulate, but there's a few more steps again that are just going to help with making sure nothing becomes unstable later on. The first and a really key one here is to go to my edit sewing tool and marking over all of that sewing that I just added at the ends of the loop. I'm going to change their sewing line type from custom to turned just to make sure that these don't try to press open as well as then going ahead and selecting all of my loops and in the 3D window right clicking and I'm going to choose that option superimpose side and they're all just going to snap next to where they actually belong next right next to the bodice of that center front seam and use my gizmo to just pull them a little forward before I simulate. One less really nice trick, especially with these teeny tiny loop pattern pieces is the tacking tool. This tacking tool, when I select it, I'm going to basically tack the end of my loop to the bodice. This is really just going to make sure that when I add in my buttons later on that they stay in place and do not end up flipping through or clipping through my button later on. Again, just a quick click on the end of my loop and to my bodice. And I can also always double check that in the 2D window. And right off the bat, I can see I actually messed up on one of these, but it, I think it should be actually just fine. But what's also really nice is you can always edit it using your edit tack tool. And I can go ahead and select any text I want to delete so that I can start over. See right here, this one actually just ended up tacked to itself, so I messed up on two of them. Again, nice thing with Clo is if you mess up, you can always fix it later on. There we go, fixing one, and this time making sure I actually tag it to the underneath garment. All right, with all of these tacked, one last thing I wanna do is they look a little thin, and again, normally this is some sort of spaghetti material, so I'm going to select all of those loops, come over to my property editor, and I'm gonna add in an additional thickness rendering. I'm gonna go with two. I think that actually looks like a little too much then. So I can always reduce that one. That looks pretty good. And of course I can always edit shape of my pattern pieces later on. With all of that done, I'm gonna zoom out a little and I'm going to go ahead and hit my space bar to turn on simulation and let those snap into place. Perfect. They all look exactly how I really want them to look. And I'm ready, I think, to go ahead and stop my simulation and add in buttons. Our button tool is going to be over on our 3D toolbar. I'm going to start with just that very first button. Literally, it's called button button. And coming over to my bodice, again, I have segment points marked out kind of where I want my buttons to hit, but I know exactly how far I want it to be placed. So I'm going to, instead of left clicking to place, right click for precision. When I come down to position, I'm going to set it as 0.2 away from the edge for my very first one. Perfect. I'm then going to switch to my select move button tool. And similar to our how to fasten buttons down a placket, I'm going to do control C, control V. I get a copy of my other button. And if I hold shift, they come straight down. While I'm still holding shift, I'm going to right click and I can now set my interval of how far apart I want these buttons to be. I'm going to stick to one and a quarter inch. And as well, I can set how many buttons do I want to add. So one, two, three, four. I now have a total of five buttons. We can see them being added about 2D and 3D, which is great. And I can hit OK. Now that I have my buttons added in, I already actually had a little shank button added in for me. But of course, we can always change that button later on simply by clicking your button in your object browser under your button tab. And if you remember, we have lots of different buttons that you can choose from for your different styles. And you could always add in custom buttons that you've created yourself as well. I think overall, the size and the placement look really good. One last thing I may want to do is again, using my select move tool, marking over all of my buttons. And before I let the simulation happen, I'm going to pull them a little forward again. This is just going to make sure that when I simulate, they're going to snap and not collide with those loops. And I'm also going to adjust their thread length. So this is really how far, how much length do they have on that thread between the body of the garment and the back of the button. I'm just going to increase that to 0.1 so they have a little bit of extra space since this again is like a shake button. It would probably have something similar to that. And now that I've done that, we can go ahead and hit space bar on our computers to let that simulate. And it looks like most of mine turned out just fine. Two of them decided to have a little snafu. That is not a problem at all. As I was saying, if anything goes wrong and we've lost a few of our loops, we can always pull them out. I'm going to start by just simply selecting them in my 
3D or 2D window and pulling them forward so I can see where they've gone. And I'm going to start by resetting that 2D arrangement. We can see again, my 2D arrangement is right in front of that shadow of my avatar. And then shoot right clicking and again, choosing superimpose side. Now that they are snapped back into place, I can always pull them just a smidge bit forward with my gizmo and turn on simulation again. Perfect. And there we go. They've nicely flattened out. Then they are back in place. All of my loops are actually across from my buttonholes. One thing we can also do, which does help to add in additional stability if you ever need it, is to select all of your button loops. Come over to the property editor and turn elastic on and set it to 100%. This is going to prevent the loop from stretching out and maintaining their shape if they were made from fabric. Of course, if instead they were actually made from maybe a small piece of elastic, you could actually turn on that elastic to the percentage that you need them to be. Now that we have this portion set, if you remember at the very beginning, we sewed together our center front seams so that they would hold together while we were creating this entire process. I'm going to select that sewing and delete it. Letting Clo load that in, perfect. And once Clo has removed or deleted that sewing, I can go ahead now and re-simulate this actual piece so that these will start to separate. I'm just get a nice view of that. And again, turning on simulation, they're going to pull apart ever so slightly. We can actually start to see the edge of that kind of little modesty panel that's underneath. And we have created a cute little dress with some loop buttons as closures. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and of course if you have any questions let me know in the chat or if there's any other videos you would love to see in the future let me know that as well. Until next time, thanks again!